Now, Richard, you know that recipe we just made, yes. fresh tuna salad, incidentally, I know what's for dinner tonight. <laughs> and, oh, it is That's so delicious. That's fine with me. But what a great way to get that fish oil. Yes, it is. And, and it has a distinctly different flavor than canned tuna. You know, so until we started tasty. really getting into it and researching yes. it, I, I yeah. always went to the canned tuna too, but never again. Well, canned tuna is convenient. And it it's is. It's a good way to get your omega-3s. But, but look, it's really great to be able to control that sodium yes. and to make sure that you get the type of tuna that is the yellow fin or, uh -huh. you know, the skipjack, yes. so you don't get that... Yeah, you don't want the mercury. mercury. You want the lower yeah. mercury content fish, Well, so, fish. not everyone can eat fish every day. Yeah, no, so you don't have to So that leads us to maybe fish oil. Let's talk exactly. all about that. Yeah, the, the fish oil is part of the omega-3s. And you, I, folks, I know you've heard a lot about this, and, and you may feel like, well, I've heard enough. Well, there is new research coming in virtually every week on the health benefits of omega-3s, and we want to get you updated. And today, the concept is omega-3s through all stages of life, childhood, infancy. We saw in the news today, kids who have omega-3s in their diet, they're smarter. 12% mm -hmm. higher IQ. If you give your children omega threes, that see that's significant. That might have helped me get through third grade a little better because that was a tough year for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm just saying. You know, it, the kids need every advantage they can possibly get. All you parents, you agree with me? Yeah, the kids need the advantages, and that's the kind of thing that intelligence is so important for our kids. Now, what are these omega threes? Omega threes are essential polyunsaturated fats. These are oils that are good for you. They're essential, meaning you can't make it. It must be in your diet. There are basically three types of omega-3s that will meet your need. The first is alpha-linolenic acid, alpha-linolenic. Then there's the eicosaptanoic, that's the EPA you hear about. And then the docohexanoic acid, docosahexanoic acid, that's the DHA. Any one of those three will meet your need for omega-3. Fish oil has a balance of all three. See, that's what gives it the advantage. The brain needs the DHA, the heart needs the EPA, and in most people, the alpha linolenic acid can be converted, but, but many of us, the enzyme that converts alpha linolenic into EPA and DHA is compromised. This is relatively common. Up to 30 or 40 percent of the American population does not convert it well to the brain and heart essential DHA and EPA. Well, how do you know if you have that enzyme You have or to not? do an expensive enzyme test and it's rarely done. It's rarely done. Doctors assume, well, you're eating healthy, you're having your fish, aren't you? Well, America doesn't eat much fish. And if you don't like fish, you need to take the fish oil. See? Because you don't know if your enzyme's working properly. Let me give you an example. If heart disease is common in your family, all your uncles and grandfather and maybe a few aunts at a young age had a heart attack or stroke, you could have a family lineage that that enzyme doesn't work very well. Did you get the idea? And taking the fish oil could spare you a lot of trouble in your health. Okay, that's the idea. Now, what do they do for us? Categorically, kind of a summary, an overview of what omega-3s do for us. First, they reduce inflammation. Remember, we know inflammation is one of the root causes of heart disease and cancer. Omega-3s reduce that. They help you absorb and transport essential fatty vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins like your vitamin A, K, E, and D. They, cause, they create a fluid cell membrane. That's very important to bring in and take out uh, metabolic byproducts and nutrients in and out of the cell. Your fluid me membrane must remain fluid. Omega-3s help you do that. Stabilize heart rate and rhythm. Help to normalize blood fats, particularly the dry glycerides. They help to prevent platelet aggregation, those little clots that form, the platelets, the snowflakes in the bloodstream. They help to memorize that, helps to minimize that, helps to normalize blood pressure. Here's one that's really important as we battle the bulge in this country, dietary satisfaction. If you're low on omega-3s, you don't feel satisfied. You keep going back to the chips, something, you know, kind of fatty and salty. You crave those kinds of foods. Well, there's not much omega-3 in the chips. You keep you eat too many. You gain weight with it if you don't have enough omega-3s. Omega-3s enhance insulin sensitivity. It helps to prevent diabetes. It, makes, it allows you to process your blood sugars better, promotes strong bones, healthy hair and, and skin, and it promotes normal brain and nerve function. All cells require omega-3s. They are essential for life. You will die if you don't have them. Okay? That's the overview. That right. is just interesting, Richard. And when you talk about reducing inflammation, are you talking about 
cellular inflammation yes. or are you talking about inflammation of your joints All and of the it. type of inflammation that All you feel that might All cause pain? Yeah, cyclooxygenase, uh, arachidonase, uh, the, the, this enzyme concept that you either make calming products or you make inflammatory products. If you have high omega-6 intake with little threes, you make inflammatory products. Okay. If you have high omega-3s, it calms. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. okay. All right, so then if we don't get enough omega-3s in our diet, what's going to happen to us systemically? Yeah, you might, uh, that's a good question. You might recognize yourself in this process. If you're low in omega-3s, how does it make you feel? And please understand that you may not have symptoms until you're 80% lower than you should be. Your blood level is 80% lower than it should be. It can take a while to develop symptoms. You may develop food cravings. That can happen fairly early, within two to four weeks of not having any omega-3s in your diet or being chronically low in omega-3s. You may feel depressed, anxious, irritable. Uh, unagreeable personality is commonly used in the literature in those who are low. You just, you fuss with everything. You know, nothing makes you happy, okay? We've met people like that, haven't we? It's surprising how many of these people are fussy just because they're not eating properly. I mean, it really surprises me when I do the research that it just goes by people. They don't realize they're not eating properly. We see a malnourished third world country child and we say, obviously, they're sick because they're not eating right. It happens in America, too, even with obesity. It amazes me. Depression, anxiety, irritability, fatigue, poor endurance, ADHD, you know, hyperactivity, inability to focus and pay attention, delayed healing, scratches and wounds don't heal very quickly, constipation develops. As time goes on, it eventually affects your immune system, one cold after another. Skin gets dry and itchy, especially in the winter. Winter, dry, itchy skin, you just itch all over if it's so dry. I think you've, most of us have experienced that. If you have a really bad winter, it could be because you're low in your omega-3s. The hair and the nails become brittle. Eventually, the joints start to scream in inflammation and pain and agony. Cardiovascular disease is not far off if you're to that point, and eventually cancer can happen, even diabetes. So it can start with just food cravings all the way to serious disease when you're deficient in your omega-3s. Okay. Well, then, you said we were going to talk about this from the children all the way up to uh -huh. the older folks about the effects of omega-3s. Well, let's start, let's share some of the findings that you found of omega-3s yeah. in children. Let's start with pregnancy and expectant mothers because that's when a baby that's gets when its very early that's start. Right. Prematurity and preeclampsia, okay? Women who eat fish during pregnancy have a lower risk of preeclampsia. That's high blood pressure and edema and early delivery, even in seizures and death of mother and child. It's still a leading cause of, of uh, perinatal death in America. Yeah, preeclampsia. Omega-3s decrease that risk and prematurity. Postpartum depression, that's been in the news a lot over the last few years. Intake of omega-3 fatty acids during pregnancy and after pregnancy significantly reduces postpartum depression. Journal of Clinical Psychiatry did a study and they found that pregnant mothers who had omega-3s in their diet were 35% less likely to become depressed. See, you can take all the antidepressants you want. If you're low in omega-3s, they won't help. Yeah, you need the omega-3s, very important. See, nature has this set up. This is very important to understand. Mother is not as important as baby. Nature gives baby all the advantages. Mother will suffer and baby will come out relatively healthy, you see. So mother, if you want to recover quickly, you really need to have super nutrition. Eye-hand coordination, mothers who supplement fish oil in the last half of their pregnancy have babies with better eye-hand coordination. Pretty neat. Isn't it? I cite two studies that I found mothers who eat fish and breastfeed their babies, because that goes right into baby, the omega-3. These children have better eyesight and better brain development. Future breast cancer risk. Babies born to mothers who supplement omega-3s, girl babies, and boys for that matter, because boys can get breast cancer too. They have a lower risk of breast cancer their entire life. These babies whose mother took omega-3s, lower risk of breast cancer their entire life. Child Health Foundation recommends pregnant mothers Lactating mothers should take at least one gram of fish oil every day. IQs, teens who ingest uh, omega-3s at 15, continue that for three years, 12% higher IQ, fewer allergies. Autistic children who take a little omega-3, they have better sleep patterns, better cognitive ability, better uh, able to eye contact and social interaction. And the obesity one, real quick, Swedish study found four-year-olds who consume more fish, flaxseed, olive oil, were on average 10 to 12 pounds lighter.
just from their diet. They weren't on a diet. They were mm -hmm. eating healthy. Pretty amazing. What about midlife? Let's do the science on fish oil when we return.